Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be a bit different because I won't be showing a tutorial or any um, material series because I will be showing you guys the app I have written for the iOS App Store, currently no Android version. So what is the Surface Database? It is more or less a collection of shader values or material values for your shaders. It is not specific to any renderer, so you can use it for PRman, V-Ray, Arnold, Redshift, whatever has a PBR, um, physical plausible workflow. So um, I just want to show you how to use it and how to work with these apps. So first you have to see some screenshots here. You get these thumbnails and all these values. Um, but if you download the app, this is how it should look like on your desk, on your um, home screen. And then you click on uh, go into the app. Let me just drive quickly. I go into the app and then you see this nice animation. And then you see a collection of shaders, which are scientific values. And you can also, um, if you don't like this view, you can have a more detailed view with some values already in place. And I'm not sure if everyone knows what these colors mean, but reflectivity is the base reflectivity. The edge to the color on the edge. And eta and kappa is a more scientific value, which is used in PR man shaders, which are physically reflectance values. So you can also change those modes to be more um, friendly. Uh, F0, F90, N and K, um, which are in, um, equivalent to those uh, edge tint and reflectivity values. And you you might find those in different packages called F F0 or for the AL shaders, it's called reflectivity and edge tint. Um, so it's all more or less the same, but you need to know how to apply them. So let's say I go to, um, let's say, which one is cool? Let's choose nickel. So this is now the page for nickel, and you can see these values, these for reflectivity, the RGB values are listed down below there. And then in the edge tint um, area, you see those RGB values and eta and kappa are bigger values, like going above one, so that's why they're clipping. Um, but they are the proper values, and if you enter those into this um, designated areas in the shader, you get the same response as in, in the render on the top. So then you have the reflectance curves, and these curves are for polarized and non-polarized uh, images. So you always want to consider checking out the non-polarized curve, which is the green one. And going from left to right, um, the curve set is um, displays the reflectivity on a certain angle. So in the top left corner of the graph, it's on zero zero. Um, and if you go up the y-axis, you can see it's a value of 0.9 at an angle of 0 degrees. So this material already reflects 90% of red at that certain reflectivity angle. And then going on the right-hand side, going up to 90 degrees, you can see that it dips at 80 degrees. It goes down a bit, and then it goes up to fully 1. And these are the graphs for all the um, different RGB values. And the values on top are corresponding to this graph. So I just extracted the RGB values from those graphs below here. And then I have supplied also some reference images that you see how the material looks in real world. And checking the render and checking the references, you can see that the base color is kind of similar, um, but it's not a one-to-one -one match because in real life, nothing is as pure as a pure metal. It's mostly corroded. It has different scratches, different roughness values. There's rust on top. So um, that's a big thing which you need to understand is that it's nice to have those scientific values. You can enter them in your shader, but be sure that you don't stop there because there's still lots to do. You need to break up the material very heavily to create a realistic looking shader. As you can see here, all those details, if you tap on them, you can actually see uh, what's going on. You can see those scratches, then there's dirt in the ridges, then there's might, there might be another material on top of that. So it's, it's very uh, sophisticated shaders. But anyways, if you don't want to type in those values, what you can do, if in the top, top right-hand corner you see this share button, and if you click this, um, you can send yourself an email with all those values, and then you can just copy and paste them into your shaders. Um, yeah, and that's what it is. And if you want to support me, I would be happy if you either, um, 
if you would remove the ads and you then I get some um, some donation I think uh, and that would be very helpful or if you have any other ideas um, you can contact me directly or send me some ideas and suggestions uh, it would be very much appreciated and if you have any further questions regarding um, this app and be sure there will be more updates to it I will add more materials I'm trying to add like a little community around them so in the end you can actually um, submit your renders and then you can tag your renders with those shaders and then you have a nice um, reference for your stuff so if you browse the community then at some point you can check okay gold or what you go to gold shader and then you get like a tab with proper CG renders of that so you can see uh, what other people have done with this, these materials so this is the basic idea of that and um, yeah if you have any uh, questions please let me know um, let me know if you have downloaded the app just uh, to, uh, to see how many people actually use it and in, you will also see the download link or the app store link in the description below right thank you guys for watching and there will be a f another m announcement soon and I will also um, record a few more material series and also some proper tutorials. Thank you guys.